Okay, we have a video for you. Um, and just like, you know, anybody who's tying flies, we're always trying to, to get better. We're always trying to improve things and, and find ways to, to be better. And so uh, we've realized that there are a bunch of our patterns that we can do um, better. This one is the mongrel meat. Now, I won't be mad if you say that the last mongrel meat kind of sucked and it was hard to deal with. Um, the head was difficult to get to work and I agree. So I've been kind of reworking it. Uh, I've added a few steps and I've made the head a lot more simple. So we'll get started. I've also changed out the hooks a bit. This is a Daiichi 2461. This is the back hook and it's going to be um, a number two. Another cool thing we've been playing with lately is this Danville's 140 denier thread. Um, it lays down flat. It's really cool thread. Similar to the UTC 140. Um, very, very similar to it. Uh, but anyway, we've been using that lately. Okay, I've got my my hook dressed. And I'm, in, I'm going to put a pretty generous marabou tail on this. So I've just pulled a bunch of marabou off the stem of the, the Nature Spirit Prime Long Marabou. I tie in a pretty long tail and cut off the butt ends. And I'll actually tie in another clump. And this is going to look really messy until we get a body on it. Alright, so there we go. It's a pretty bushy tail. Um, so one of the things I've been playing with a lot is this uh, gold ice dub. Now the, the metallic colors of ice dub are different from a lot of the other colors because when you pull it out it's it's more like uh, the ice wing fiber. It's really long and flowy. It's not crinkly like the other stuff. So what I'm going to do is get you know just a handful of, of it about like this. And I'm going to kind of put that on top of the hook, hook shank and do a few loose wraps of thread around it so it should distribute that all around the hook and if it didn't you can kind of take your fingers in here and, and wiggle it around um, and once you get it where you want it you can now make a few more tight wraps and now take all those fibers going forward and pull those back and tie those down again so there we've got kind of a, a, a little bit of a flashy tail over the, the marabou. Here's another cool tool that we've been playing with lately. It's a Stonfo dubbing brush thinger. Curtis will correct me in the annotations for the video. So I actually don't know what the, the tool is called, but it's a Velcro on one side and a comb on the other. Okay, so the body is going to be made of black, holograph black holographic cactus chenille and some purple schloppen. So the schloppen you'll tie in by the tip, so it gives you that nice taper as you wrap it forward. And I'm going to stop my thread right about here. That's where I'm going to leave some open hook shank so I can wrap a soft, or a soft hackle of uh, marabou. I like to hand wrap the schloppen so I can control what the curvature of the feathers is doing a little bit and brush it back as I wrap it. Okay, so now we've got basically a blinged out woolly bugger. You could fish it just like that. Yes, I understand that. Okay, so now we've got this is the remainder of our feather. I've pulled the, the bottom portion out to uh, tie the tail with. And now I'm going to use the tip of it. So if you wet your fingers a little bit, you can create a really nice tie-in point for the tip. All right. Now you just wrap it. Don't don't worry if it's a little bit messy at first. 
because we're going to come in and brush it all out. All right, so there's our soft tackle. Now, as I tie this down, one way to, to kind of create less bulk right here at the head is to kind of wiggle your thread through those fibers and just make one wrap to tie it down. Then I can let go of that feather. And now I'm going to brush all those back and kind of wrap over those those butts a little bit and that will really reinforce it. Now I can cut that feather off. Okay, now is where this little comb comes in. You could use the Velcro for this as well, but I'm just going to brush that marabou out. So once I've got that brushed out, um, you can see I've got kind of a longer head here than I need. Um, what I'm going to do is add some more gold ice dub. So again, I've got a kind of a medium sized clump of this and I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the tail. Just two kind of moderately tight wraps. And then tighten it down and I can you can see that I didn't get a lot here on the bottom. So I can take these fibers now and kind of push those down to the bottom and tie those off. So this little this little collar of uh, eye stub can be a little bit tricky, but uh, I mean, don't give up. It's it really makes a cool effect because it moves so well in the water. All right, so I've got that whip finished. I'll just brush it out. And yeah, that will fish just great like that as well. And then um, sometimes these bigger heads drive me nuts. So I'll just tag it with a little bit of loon flow. Okay, the, the front half of this hook, the weighting system is really different. Um, I wanted to use um, like an epoxy style head, a resin head with some eyes. Um, but I also wanted it to have a good amount of weight so that it will get down. So I kind of have been working with a, a weighting system for this fly that would be effective. So. What I do is I take some 025 lead or 035 lead, some pretty thick lead, and just start building up a body of lead about like that. That's 10 or 11 wraps, 12, 13, I don't know. And then I'm going to take and go back over the lead, you know, three or four times. And then instead of trimming this off, if I just start pulling down and wiggling it back and forth, it will make a nice little tapered cutoff point right there. And the same thing in the back. All right, so now I'll attach my thread. And I'm going to put some barbell eyes on this, but I don't want them right up here by the front of the of the, the head. I'm going to put them right back here by this lead. And just give it a few figure eights, and then I'm going to put those barbell eyes underneath the hook shank. So you can see how far back those are on the hook. I might even push them a little bit further back. Before you get a lot of thread wraps on there, you can really manipulate this to be exactly where you want it to be. So I'll just wrap over the lead, seal it in here at the back of the lead. Don't worry about covering up the lead completely. Do some figure eights around the bottom of the eyes, just to give it a lot of thread. Um, mostly so that when I put super glue in there, it will create you know a really strong surface to, to bond to. If you don't super glue these, they'll, they'll wiggle all over the place. It won't be good. So I use this Zap Thin um, Super Glue. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of this glue right in between those eyes. And it will bleed all into the, 
the lead and everything. So that's plenty of glue to get those eyes set. Okay, so now, because it's an articulated fly, we'll throw in some articulation wire there. And I found some cutters like this. They're just uh, at the craft store. These are the very best cutters there are out there for this articulation wire. All right, so I'm gonna put those so that the, the wire goes right about to the, the eye of the hook so that I can bend it over and, and double it up. And I'll just wrap down a little bit. The reason I wrap down the bend of the hook is because this is where the junction is for that back hook. And if it's up here, it, it's a lot easier for that junction to come down and, and foul around the hook point. So if you leave it you know, a little bit further back, it's, it's less likely to foul up. You know, it'll still happen. It happens all the time. There's really not a lot you can do to, to keep it from fouling, but it'll get you in the right you know, direction. So I'm gonna use some purple articulation beads. I don't know what color Curtis has them called in the store, but get the purplish ones. And so we just thread it through the eye of the hook and pull that up through. Now with articulated flies, you don't want them to be too tight. You wanna give them some room to, to move around. So that's about right where I have it right there. So now I will just tie those down. And one of the things I really like about the mongoose is this material clip. I can just stick the fly in there and hold that articulated fly or the, the back end of it out of the way. Okay, so now I'm gonna wrap those pieces of wire all the way to right behind the, the barbell eye. And I'll trim the long piece off. And now double those over. So that's the base of our mongrel meat. You can come in here again with super glue and just kind of saturate that all to, to reinforce it. A little tiny bit of glue will basically get that everywhere. I've done it so much where the glue has actually gone down the thread into the spool of thread and then really makes you mad. Okay, so I'm gonna go about to right where this lead ends and that's where I'm gonna tie in some more marabou for a tail. This tail is going to be a little bit shorter and a little bit more sparse than the back tail. But I still will use two full clumps. And then we'll just repeat the process with the chenille and schloppen for the uh, front body. We got a good mess going on here. Okay, so we're pretty messy. That's how we like it. Okay, so now is where this fly kind of starts to get a little bit different. Um, the Cheech Leech has a big collar of marabou. Um, the, uh, the mongrel meat, however, I use a a, a collar of Arctic Fox tail feathers. So what I'll do is I'll just prepare a, a clump of Arctic Fox. Not too much, you know, about like that much. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the guard hairs out of the, the top of it. Just kind of free it up. It'll help it to move a little bit better. And what I'll do now is I'm going to tie those in right on top of the fly. So what I've done is I've trimmed those up and I'll tie those in just like that. So now 
as you can see it just kind of creates a mohawk over the top of the fly and I want it to kind of flare out and cover more of the top of the fly. So I, I really struggled to find a way to do this um, until I was messing with some UV resins and Loon Flow is, is the best for getting this to do what I want it to do. So what I'll do is I'll spread it out kind of how I want it to, to sit like that and then I'll mash it down on top of the the barbell eyes and then I'll coat it with Loon Flow and let it really saturate in there. And once it's saturated I just cure it and then it's basically locked in that position. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom of the fly. So now we've got a, a bare space here in the front of the hook and so we're going to cover that up with some Bruiser Blend. Um, so this is some Bruiser Blend Junior. It's the one inch fiber Bruiser Blend and this is a, a color that we haven't had until now in the Junior color and it's just the plain purple color but it's a nice light kind of lavender purple. And I'll pull out, you know, pretty generous clump of it. And what you do with this Bruiser Blend is you kind of stack it, pull it apart, roll it up, stack it, and just kind of repeat that until you're pretty confident that, that all the fibers are going the same direction. So it should look like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just not tie it in right in the middle. I'm going to tie it in so those butt ends just kind of barely go up over those barbell eyes and tie that clump right on the top. And you can even go two-tone on this mongrel meat. You can do a different color on the bottom, but I'm just going to do straight up purple. Okay, so I've got two clumps tied in. And so now I'm going to tie those back. And one thing, you see that what I did, I just kind of wiggled it and pulled it forward. You want those to be right about to the eye of the hook, right at the edge of the eye of the hook. So I'm going to take the top section and come up here and tie those off like that. And the bottom I'm just going to kind of spread that out, bring my thread up, pull those under, and tie those off too. Make sure your thread wraps are nice and snug and now we'll, we'll give it a good brush. And this should cover up those lead barbell eyes. Okay, so you can see how all the different colors of purple are kind of working with each other here. Um, now I'm going to put another collar of this ice stub in here. And this one's a little bit more tricky because you have less room to work with. You're going to place it on there. And this one got a little bit trapped down, so I'm going to brush it out before I fold it over. And you're not going to get the gold completely, like, perfectly distributed around the hook shank, but as long as it gives it, you know, the, the appearance of just kind of an accent of flash, it's fine. Okay, so now that head really looks kind of messy right now, which is fine. So what I'll do is I'll whip finish. And now we're going to tie, or put the eyes in. Okay, so I've taken a lighter and I've kind of singed away any of the free little fibers right there by the head. And then, because I'm going to put on some 3D eyes onto this uh, fly, I like to just take a barb masher and come in and flatten the sides of this really well. And that creates a better platform to stick those eyes to. Okay, so these are 316s. A lot of times when I take these out of the package, I just write what size they are. Because I'm terrible about putting them back in the package. And if I did this right, these eyes should fit right the barbell eyes are kind of right here. Let's see, right there. And so these eyes will fit nicely right in between there. 
And then if you have to, moisten your fingers a little bit and stroke back that ice stub so it doesn't get in the way as you uh, use the UV resin. Okay, so I'll, I'll pinch those eyes in place. And the first thing I'm going to do is use some flow to kind of saturate the head in between those eyes. So I put it in there, I'll squeeze the eyes in place and cure the top. And I'll do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, now I'll use uh, the thick resin and I'll build up the rest of the head. And go all the way over the eyes and kind of keep that rotating back and forth until you can get it in place with a bodkin. And now I'll just tag it with the light. And you know, I've played with a lot of different resins and the Loon Thick is one of the most versatile because it, it allows you to build up a nice head like this. Um, now I'll finish it off with Flow to get rid of that tack. You know, we've done a lot of studies on UV resins and, you know, a tack-free resin is, is just one element of the battle. I mean, durability comes before tack, I think. Anyway, got the flow on there. We'll cure it all up. And there you have it. Now this pattern is, is going to be uh, put out by Fulling Mill. It's one of our contract patterns with them in purple, olive, white, and black. Anyway, check out our website store.flyfishfood.com uh, to find the materials and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.